Jesus, precious Spirit, with our lifted hands we prostrate for. the opportunity to interview one of our great men and women and give them the opportunity and give also ourselves the opportunity to experience and to encounter them, their leadership journey and how far they have come. This is the opportunity for us to get up and close with them and get to their story and get to particularly apologize for holding up the meeting. Few challenges. We still are trying to resolve all the challenges. But we thank God we are able to that. Our guest has been online, in fact. We have been <laughs> online uh, way before the time, but it's taken us a bit of time to set up because of few in internet challenges that we are having. And so as you can see, I'll have to <laughs> keep my video off because our internet here is so unstable for us today. And that is why you may not, once we are able to resolve it, we're trying to get other sources and to see whether those ones. Apologize and also to thank you for until now. Really, really excited. I have the opportunity to uh, share the experience together with you. One, when it comes to leadership, by his example and by how he goes about his things, we are excited to have the one and only Professor Jerry John Ponyo with us. Prof, good evening again and welcome. Good evening, Kwame, and thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, we are excited to have you. Um, one of the messages that I received, the person said, oh, our very own Prof. Jerry is coming. This will be worth the time. <laughs> and I see the person is online with us. We, we are all excited. Um, a, a lot of messages, people are excited. They want to have an encounter with you. Tonight, we will uh, ask you a few questions. We will also give our audience the opportunity to come out with your questions and also engage with you. So prepare. <laughs> <laughs> prepare, okay. prepare for, for all the questions. Uh, all the questions are going to come. Yeah, someone is already saying, I can see Prof's infectious smile. <laughs> okay, please, who is JJ Puno? Okay. So once again, thank you and thanks for all who have made time to join us in this evening's meeting. So by way of background, I was born in Konongo in the Ashanti region of Ghana. Um, I started my primary education at uh, Odumase RC Primary and uh, around class five, going to class six, I moved from Odumasi RC Primary to Konongo RC Primary. And RC basically means Roman Catholic. So yeah. when I finished my primary education, I moved over back to Odumasi and uh, I enrolled at uh, Odumasi LAGSS and LA meaning local authority. So that is where I had my uh, junior high school now or junior secondary school education. I finished my exams and enrolled at the Konongo Odumasi Secondary School at the time. 
now uh, uh, Konongo Dumasi Senior High School. From there, I continued to um, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology and enrolled in a BSc program in electrical engineering. Completed my electrical engineering program and enrolled with St. Hubert as a national service person. I mean, the minor sem seminary then. After my national service, I came back to the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology and did my master's in electrical engineering. I completed that and immediately I finished. The university picked me on as a lecturer in the Department of Electrical Engineering. Served for some time and in 2011, I uh, went to the University of Electronic Science and Technology of China, where I pursued a PhD in uh, Information and Communication Engineering. Um, came back to the university and continued, and uh, this is how far we have come as far as background is concerned. And so if you want to know who JJ is, that is my background. I'm hoping that satisfies your question, Kwame. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm not even started with the J. <laughs> so I'm not satisfied at all. Okay. Why did your parents name you JJ? <laughs> okay, so it's primarily uh, around the time I was born. Um, my dad is uh, an about, um, he actually liked the man Jerry John. And I was born around the time when he came uh, into the limelight. And so I was born as Jerry Ponyo. And then in 1990, uh, when I was baptized, I picked the name John, or I was given the name John. So I started as Jerry Konyu and then became Jerry John when I was baptized. So basically, there is some connection as far as Jerry Rollins is concerned, and um, that is it. Uh, that is where I get my JJ from. Ah, we found God. So you're a politician. <laughs> oh... Not in the <laughs> anyway. Let's let's not go there. <laughs> but it's basically about um, the, the the time within which I was born. Normally, people name their children after major circumstances of the time, and I was born at a time when a man Jerry John was making the airwaves as far as Ghana is concerned. And so, to keep his memory, my dad named me after him. Yeah, uh, we thank God for your life. Um, personally, I have had the opportunity to serve under your leadership, and I can testify to the impacts that you have had upon my life. I believe there are many, many others online now with us because you are uh, coming and because you are sharing your experience with us now. Since you say we should leave it there, I'll move from the political side to the leadership side. Yeah. Now, um, we want to know, so far as you are concerned, what is your concept of leadership? Okay, okay. so I, I consider leadership to be about building relationship and leveraging on that relationship to push a collective agenda. So leadership is about having a vision or picking a vision from the most high and trying to work with people by building strong bonds of relationship and pushing the agenda together so that collectively you can all realize the corporate goal or the corporate vision. I consider leadership as an opportunity to serve and an opportunity to leave a legacy in the lives of the people that you lead. And so if you ask me about leadership, it's basically about knowing where we have to get to and building relationships so that you can translate that vision 
through how you relate and encouraging people to work together so that you can attain the collective vision of the organization. That is my understanding as far as leadership is concerned. So Prof, I pick some key words from your concept of leadership. Yeah. One of them is and just following by the words that you use to just describe the vision, um, you find that that vision of leadership comes from a source. Am I yes. right? Exactly, exactly. So that, 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 that was going to be the, the next level because when I talk about having a vision and trying to build relationship through which the vision should be translated, it's important that we appreciate the fact that we are not here by ourselves. It is important that we recognize that in every circumstance, God bears the ultimate vision. And so That's through right. our interaction with him, he opens our eyes and opens our senses to what his purpose is as far as that circumstance is concerned. And so we receive the vision from God himself and we organize or we work with people to achieve what God's vision is as far as the people that he has handed over to us is concerned. And so when I talk of the vision, I am talking about the divine mandate that has been given and working collectively together to be able to realize that uh, as, as a, 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 a whole. Wonderful. One of my mentors, um, one Paul Martinelli, has a nice way he puts it. He says, God, G-O-D, grand overall designer. God is the grand overall designer of everything that we see. And so then he gives us inspiration from what you are saying. He gives us inspiration for everything else that we are supposed to do. And Prof, thank you very much for sharing that with us. Friends, if you are connected with us on Zoom and you are enjoying the conversation, I want to remind you that you have the opportunity to ask a question. If you already have a question, you can put it in the chat. And then in the course of the uh, conversation, we will put the question to the professor and then he will respond appropriately. So if you have any question, you can share that in the chat as at now. You are also free to invite your friends to join us um, and, and, and also be part of this wonderful conversation that we are having. So Prof, what you were saying is that now once you get the source, once you get a vision from the source, mm -hmm. uh, for you, the next logical thing to do is, is to build relationship. Exactly. Exactly. Um, with people. Yeah. You, you need to build a team. You need to build people who can understand what God's will and God's purpose is for that particular circumstance so that you can work together to achieve what his will is. And it is important that we recognize that, I mean, it is not by chance that we find ourselves where we are. God by design has a purpose and has a will for everything that we are involved in. It can be academic, it can be ministry, it can be marriage, whatever it is. God has a plan. I mean, Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says it better, that I alone know the plans that I have for you. So when he translates that purpose, that plan, it is important that we find a way of letting others come to an understanding of what God's plan and what God's purpose is. When everyone has caught the vision, when everyone has caught the plan, it is easier working together. When you are the only one who knows it, working with people who do not understand what the ultimate vision is, is always difficult. And that is the reason why through relationship, you try to let people understand what the ultimate goal is so that you can work together to achieve that ultimate, uh, I mean, mandate from God. Yeah. 
Prof, I, I can testify. I mean, we worked together for ITI. <laughs> um, and I remember the good time um, we spent <laughs> we spent together and, and how you are able to connect with both the young and the old. You know, our relationship with the national office was solid. Our relationship at the um, zonal or I mean the southern and the central and the northern and the, uh, so all those zones were very well connected to to ITI and uh, we, we we saw a lot of growth. Um, I testify. I'm sure others are online who will testify that uh, you are one of the key persons. I would say probably the main architect of setting up ITI for us the way that, that we, we have. And we bless God for your life. Some of us were privileged to have served under your leadership and really benefited from that. Now, since you're talking about vision, you're talking about relationships, then I want to ask you, uh, do you have certain leadership traits or some styles that have characterized your leadership well maybe before we even go there i'm sure <laughs> if we come into the professional side yeah. you have some leadership experiences to share <laughs> maybe <we'll... laughs> so wh which one maybe the I... professional side yeah. okay yeah so... you do the professional side i'll come to the leadership okay so um <laughs> as as i mentioned um if we talk about leadership uh, my journey has been twofold leadership along ministry lines or along church lines and then leadership along academic lines um so with reference to the academic environment, I did mention that uh, I came back uh, from my bachelor's and then uh, went to do my national service and came back to do the master's. So leadership within the academic environment started when I was uh, called to the Senate at the Graduate Students Association of Ghana. So from there, I graduated and joined uh, faculty as a lecturer. Went back to do my PhD and then when I returned, I uh, went along the ladder to become a senior lecturer. And as a senior lecturer, I took over the leadership of the department as the head of the electrical and electronic engineering department. With time, um, I became the Dean of the Faculty of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Um, and normally when you are Dean, you have a number of departments that you have to coordinate or a number of heads of department that you work with. Um, along the line also, uh, there are a number of centers of excellence that we work with in the College of Engineering, and I became the deputy project lead of one of those centers. Currently, we have what we call the West Africa Sustainable Engineering Network for Development, and I happen to be the coordinator as far as that particular network is concerned. Professionally, I am registered with the Ghana Institution of Engineers, and my area of focus is telecommunication engineering. Within the College of Engineering, there is a research lab uh, that we lead, and that is the Emerging Networks and Technologies Research Lab. And our focus basically has to do with doing research in the area of artificial intelligence, doing research in the area of Internet of Things, emerging networks, and then intelligent systems. So from there, uh, I moved from the faculty to the bigger university level, where currently I work uh, in the vice chancellor's office as the quality assurance and planning unit officer 
of the university. So with reference to leadership along academic lines, that is how far the Lord has brought us. But the principle has not changed. In every sphere, it is important that we have an understanding where we want to go and we build teams, we build relationships through which we all can come to an understanding of what the ultimate goal is so that we can work together to realize it for the good of God and country. So in terms of um, the professional life, this is currently where we are. Kwame, is that sufficient for you? <laughs> it should be for now. <laughs> if I if I attempt any other question, you say I'm, I'm asking too many. But yeah, I mean, so what you've said, yeah. <laughs> this this needs to be unpacked. You know, um, you 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 served in wow, as head of department, then becoming dean. That's that's awesome. That's that's great levels of of leadership now having to lead different heads of departments on, on university campus speaks volumes and we, we 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 are privileged to to have you to share some of these experiences with us and i believe that as we go on um we'll glean a lot <laughs> from you i promise our listeners that um, we'll get you to to share a lot of these things, these things um, with us. So for you, the principle has been the same. Yeah, you draw the source. I mean, the vision from the main source, who is God, and then you work at getting the team to to relate and to bond together so that we can achieve what it is that has been set before us. Also. Just, just great, just great. Now, someone is asking, let me just put this out there. Someone is asking, then how do you, co how do you combine um, <laughs> academics with the ministry work, you know? <laughs> any, any challenges in yeah. China and all those places? Kwame, the, I've always said this, that to the extent that we can plan and to the extent that we have a passion for what we do, there will definitely be a way of keeping a balance. So with mm. reference to making sure that we are able to do all that, it is purely about how we manage our time. As much as possible, we need to ensure that we are not yielding to time wasters. And making sure that whenever we are spending time, we are making maximum use of that time. Because any time that mm. you overspend or any time that you go beyond what is allowable with reference to a particular tax, other aspects of your life will suffer. And so managing mm. time is critical to be able to do all that at the same time. So if you want to multitask, it's important that you appreciate that every activity is bound by time. And if you don't stick to the time, others will suffer. The other thing also has to do with prioritizing and ensuring that you are making yourself available where you are needed the most. So where you have so many things that you need mm. to do at the same time, you want to find out which one is such that if I don't go or if I don't do it, it doesn't get done. There are several other things that if you don't show up, others can step in. So you try to delegate and let them do that. But where you necessarily have to be there, then you place it on top and ensure that you make time for that. So what I've said, ensuring that you are managing your time properly, ensuring that you are prioritizing, ensuring that you are paying attention and not yielding to time wasters. That is uh, what I can say for now, as far as uh, keeping a balance is concerned. <laughs> mm. Since uh, studies into artificial intelligence and things like that are part of what you do, I'm wondering, do you, do you use any artificial intelligence uh, <laughs> tools for time management? Oh, it's, it's about, you know, you need to build it into your system. 
my nature is that I am wired such that I try to stick to time. And I try the best mm. that I can to ensure that whatever time that I'm spending, I am using it productively. So um, you could have the AI tools and all that, but if it is not wired into your system, if it is not in your bloodstream, it doesn't make any difference. I think that to be able to do a lot of things and make impact, it is important that we pay attention to time and ensure that whatever time that we are spending is bearing fruit because we are focusing on the most important and not wasting time doing the unnecessary things. Yeah. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, so now the, the traits, the leadership traits, leadership styles. How do you go about your leadership? And where, where did you pick some of those things along the way? What were some, some of those experiences that, you know, allowed you to add this trait or allowed you to add that trait? And then now, what do you have? What are the traits that you use for your leadership? You no, know, I've said this over and over again in our discussion. In this conversation, I have said that leadership is about building relationship. You know, when I'm in an environment, the first thing I want to understand is why am I here? I will pray to God and ask him, why have you brought me here? When I started as head of department, I needed to pray and seek the face of God with reference to what his purpose is as far as that is concerned. When I became dean the same, when I became head of the quality assurance unit of the university, I needed to seek the face of God with reference to what his purpose is as far as my being there is concerned. When you understand what the will of God is, the next thing is to build relationship. So I have said over and over again that in building relationship with the people that are around you, the core that you are working with, it is important that you pay attention to detail as far as the people that you are working with is concerned. It is all about the people. It is all about what you can leave as a legacy in the life of the person when you are done working together. And so how I manage it is to ensure that the people that you are working with, you are caring for them and ensuring that you let them know they are appreciated. And that is actually the reality because without them, you are not. You are because they are. If they leave you, you cannot accomplish it all by yourself. Consciously, you must let people know that we are doing this together and I need you to be able to succeed. So as long as we can build that environment, as long as we can agree that we want to do this together and if we succeed, we succeed together, the chances of making success is, is much, much higher. So if you are asking about traits, uh, basically all that I can say is paying attention as far as the needs of the people that you are working with is concerned. And um, I've said this over and over again, that once we can pay attention to the little things, the rest will follow. So in an environment, you need to learn to celebrate people need to learn to recognize their birthdays, recognize their anniversaries, recognize it when they are looking their best. When people have come to work and they are looking good, you don't need to let somebody come from outside to tell them. You need to let them know that indeed they are looking well. It is important that you find a way of helping people build confidence in themselves. And once you are able to do that, the sky is the limit as far as attaining the corporate goal and the corporate vision is. is, is. And I've said this, um, with reference to where we have picked these traits from, it is all about working in the vineyard of God and we are still learning. And that's the reality. I mean, we did a lot in the area of ITI, even at the school, at, at the university level. I mean, with uh, the, the, the KNUST student group, Legion of Mary, ITI and all that. Every stage it has been a contributory factor as far as the leadership uh, I, I mean, journey 
is concerned. And we haven't finished. We keep learning every now and then. There are instances we make mistakes. And when we do make mistakes, we learn from our mistakes and we try to improve and get better. So it's a learning curve. We are still in the process and we are hoping that with time, we get better at what we do. Pam, is that fine? Awesome, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So I'm, I'm picking some of the things that you are sharing, paying attention to yeah. detail. And here you are, you know, one of the few people who calls me by my, my name, you know, Kwame um, Boateng, you, you are very careful <laughs> to call me by that name. And I can testify, you. some of you who are listening can, can testify since we started, he's been referring to me as Kwame and, and he calls me Kwame Boateng. That, that shows also an example of how Prof takes a particular notice of certain things and then reaches out to people. And you, you also celebrate the, the people that you work with. Uh, someone has said that we have to be generous with praise. We have to be generous with praise. I mean, uh, we all have issues, but once you recognize that someone has done something... great the person is uh, for leaders who are online with us leader who has climbed to the church I mean, in church in ministry in his career and professional life at the university where he's lecturing now these are things that we also can pick and that is why we make uh, such illustrious sons of the land available to us to learn and also to grow together Mm -hmm. One of my brothers who is online, I, I'm just looking at his name. I thought by now he'll be busy preparing for next Saturday. I'm surprised he's online. <laughs> if I mention his name now, he's easy. I'm, I'm cause trouble. <laughs> uh, this, today we are just discussing him and how by next week, by this time, he'll be sorted. And, and some of us will spare him. I'll mention his name. He, oh, yes. he knows himself. He'll definitely be sorted. <laughs> <laughs> Prof, we, we are just excited to, to have you with us. Now, one of the things that I observed, which you have not talked about so far, yeah. is, is that the ability of you to well, I mean, come again, to, to is, um... manage pressure. Okay, to manage pressure. Okay. And you are able to keep your yes. <laughs> and, and working under pressure. Uh, yeah. Is it clear now? Yeah. So I, I've seen um, just this earlier conference, you know, with my sociological eyes, I was observing things and looking at. And, and it came up again, you know. <laughs> you remember that night when we just met you at the place, we were talking about accommodation issues and <laughs> just how we took steps together with the rest of the team. And by the time we realized, things were sorted and things were flowing. So mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you handle yourself under pressure? Okay, we, we face pressure, but... When you are able to handle it the way you do, we want to find out, how do you do it? <laughs> Kwame, you are, you are asking how I'm able to manage pressure. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Um, the experience that I have with reference to dealing with difficult situations is that it is when you are calm that you are able to think well. You know, when there is a situation and everything seems to be getting out of hand, the experience I have had is that it always pays to sit back, 
think through it and then take a step. What I realize is that in the heat of things, if you don't keep your cool and you also respond by shouting it out and then complaining and all that, then you are compounding the problem and you really are not part of the solution. And so in a difficult situation, in a pressure situation, it is always important to go into your closet and pray about what do I do at this time? My experience has been that anytime that there is a situation like that, I, I try to find a closet within my heart where I commune so that I can find a way of dealing with the situation. And so how I manage pressure is to pray through it. How I manage pressure is to think through it. How I manage pressure is to appreciate the fact that it will be well. And I keep telling myself that every now and then. When things are getting out of hand, I need to continue to remind myself it is well and it shall be well because the Lord is with you. So Kwame, that is it. It is about not losing your cool, but quietly praying in your heart and thinking through the next step to take. Because it is the next step you take that will lead to a solution. It is not the noise or giddy giddy thing that you do that will solve anything. Okay, so that is what I can say with reference to that. Keeping your cool and ensuring that uh, you are thinking through it and trying to get a solution and not adding to the challenges. <laughs> you know, today, uh, today I was doing a teaching <laughs> and a question was posed to me. I'll pose a similar question to you. Okay, Kwame. When you say praying through it. Yes. Praying through it. Exactly. Uh, give, us, uh, <laughs> give us a sample. Because, okay. you know, <clears throat> Um, as, as I have said, I, re I remember, I've seen instances, not only once, I've seen instances. I, I can remember very well one night, alumni meeting B, that we had at Adolfi. <laughs> that meeting that we had to break <laughs> and come back again. You know, don't be shy. I was so new to alumni assistance, and I was just looking at you. <laughs> and and how in the midst of all that you were able to keep your cool yeah. and you are talking about prayer being key yeah. so normally a few, just some few words and terms that you use in the prayer so that we can make notes you know and apply <laughs> oh <laughs> um you know there are prayers that you say in the quiet and in the midst of the storms you want to ask the lord what do I do? Show me the way. Okay, so mm -hmm. you made uh, you you brought up the issue about the just ended conference when the night of arrival we had an issue with accommodation, and in that situation, there, there definitely is that God has a way. He definitely will make a way, and it is always important that in the heat of all that. You find some room within your heart to commune with God with reference to what to do. And there and then you get some enlightenment with reference to do this. And then you just go that way. And once you are convinced that this is the direction, there is no turning back and it does work. So all I, all I can say is, I mean, learning to connect with God and learning to hear from him in the midst of the storms has always come through. And it happens all the time. I mean, ministry-wise, workplace. I mean, at the workplace, we are always working under pressure. And you go into a meeting and the things are running around and all that. You want to quietly seek the face of God with reference to what to do. And he always comes through with the way to go. I mean, what comes to mind is... Uh, when Moses will say that, I mean, let us show us your glory. And he will also say that if you don't go with us, then we are not going. I'm saying in every situation, God has a way. And we need to quietly wait and listen with reference to what the way of God is. When you are not sure, keep your cool 
and wait on him. Don't run ahead of him. You may end up becoming the problem rather than the solution. <laughs> nice one, you know. And and two for Steve is online. For Steve and oh. Puma, we we work together, and she's, she's talking about memories. Memories. I'm sure she remembers. Oh, that has been years. Uh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, we thank God. You know, we we thank God for your life, bro. We thank God for your life now. As, as you, you share with us, for me, it is important um, that we, we just pause and take note of what Prof has just shared. There are times, situations come, and the, the normal or human tendency naturally is to want to get into the thick of things and want to do something without the pause to check with your God as to what is his mind? What does he think about this situation? And, and then to allow him to give some guidance. Mm. And I like the way you put it. As, as you make that prayer, he will share some light and you pick on that lead. And then all of a sudden you see that things are falling in place. That, that kind of trust, you see, that kind of a, uh, assurance for us to depend on God makes a lot of difference. Makes a lot of difference. And I'm sure uh, you who is online with us, you're picking some of these lessons. It's, it's just great to anchor your life where you have chosen to anchor. If you are there, be there. Uh, if you are not, it's a different matter. But really anchor your life. And, and Prof is sharing, this, this is not only in ministry, Mm. In in professional life, in yeah. in where he's working at the university, he, he just said that we work under pressure. Yeah. <laughs> we work under pressure to be the dean, you know, to, to be a dean. You don't take what he's saying to to just be something that you can pass by like that. He knows what he's talking about, and for me, I'm just I'm just speaking these things as you are sharing them and i want to emphasize them for the rest of us to you know be aware that these things really matter and we have to take cognizance of of them now prof how do you inspire people uh, relationship building um, you talked about the fact that you need to share the direction that God is giving to you, the vision that God, how do you do it? How do you go about it? You know, uh, let, me, let, me even, let me read that one to connect with the, the question that I'm, um, he, Babo is saying that I have worked with Prof. J for some years now, and he's a great guy. His zeal and commitment to quality and excellence. Now, now I get another question. <laughs> to quality and excellence, is one on proud. I want you to ask him this question for me. How is he able to smile to all situations and manage his time? And I'm sure you've gone into it. <laughs> if I repeat it, you accuse me for repeating it. And, and Babo says again that he's one leader I love working with and be under his tutelage any day, any day. And he says, God bless you, Papa Jay. So how do you get your team to, to give of yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. best and how how do you okay, get your team so, to to work you, how do you, you get your team to buy okay. into the mission so i i did mention that the way we achieve what has been handed over to us is by sharing the vision so that we all can understand what it is, is required of us so we can work together. So in every situation, when one is called to lead, and I'm using mine as an example, 
The many times that I've been called to lead, it is always important that when there is a vision for a unit, when there's a vision for a department, when there's a vision for a faculty, and you feel it in your spirit that this is what God is calling us to, it is important that you write it down. So whenever you are leading, it is important that you note what the strategic mandate is for that particular unit. So you write it down and then you communicate it and let them write it down based on how they understand it. And then you receive feedback with reference to what you shared. Let them throw it back at you with reference to what their understanding is as far as the vision is concerned. Where there are deficiencies, you try to work together so that you all can come to the same page as far as the mandate of that particular organization is concerned. So once we all understand that within this environment, this is what is expected of us. Then we now begin to look at what are our strengths, what are our weaknesses. And it is important that in relating with people, what we need to appreciate is that in building a team, each and every person must feel important. And how you do so is recognizing the unique potential of the people that you are working with and speaking it back to them that within this team, you are my this, you are my that, you are my this, so that everybody knows that we all have a role to play as far as the corporate agenda is concerned. To the extent that people feel important, to the extent that people feel appreciated in the work that they are doing, it becomes easier for us to achieve the corporate vision. And so how we also encourage is through relationship, letting people come to appreciate that, oh, I recognize this trait in you. I recognize this potential in you. I am thinking that in achieving the corporate objective, you, you, you will play a very key role as a result of your strength in this. So in bringing all the pieces together, we form a winning machine as far as the environment within which we work is concerned. And so Kwame, in response to that question, it has to do with writing down what the corporate mandate is, getting to understand it through a discussion. And once we all are on the same page, identifying what our strengths are and letting people recognize the unique role that they can play as far as the, 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 the corporate mandate is concerned and consistently encouraging them that this, the way you do this, no one does it better than you. Keep doing this and we will surely succeed. Kwame, your, your line. Forgive. <laughs> I'm so much in a hurry to ask a question. <laughs> I mean, you, you are able to identify people and what it is that they can do best. And so it, it then allows people to also give off their best in, in all, all the circumstances of your life. And it's just great. But in case, just in case, so I'm not saying it has happened, in case you get a stubborn one, okay, how do, how do you do with quote unquote the stubborn people who uh, as, as if they don't hear anything, <laughs> as if they don't hear <laughs> anything yeah. that is said to them. How do you deal with difficult colleagues? Yeah, difficult uh, uh, people, and, and in in terms of working relationship. Well, I, mean, it, I think it has to do with patience. You know, the Patient. first and foremost. It is important that you understand that if genuinely the person has the best interest of the organization at heart and has deficiencies, in that regard, you can afford to be patient until the person comes along. I'm saying this because there are certain environments where 
you meet people who by nature are working towards your failure. In such instances, you just want to be careful how you manage it. But where in an environment people, they want to help, but they are not, I mean, it has to do with their deficiency in one way or the other. In that regard, you try to identify what their positives are and you continue to heighten, you continue to remind them of their positives. With time, the negatives with time will be sorted out. You know, where people consistently get uh, them, I mean, you telling good things about them, they no longer focus so much on their negatives and then you can. But uh, in that regard, you want to be patient. Some learn faster than others. Those who are not picking it early, it is important that you are patient with them. But where people are in the environment and are working towards your failure, what you try to do is to try to work around them so that even though they are working towards your failure, you are still respecting them all right, but you try to as much as possible still get the work done. I am hoping that I have communicated well and I haven't confused you by this. <laughs> are you suspecting yourself <laughs> i i have mentioned two categories of people those who are committed to yeah. ensuring that we all succeed and those who are not committed to that cause. Give me patience. exactly so you want to be yeah. patient with those who want to work and succeed and you want to find a way of working around those who are working towards the failure of the organization those are the two people that have, and even with those who are so difficult that they want the organization to fail, you still have to be patient with them. Uh, but you just need to know that with reference to the orientation of this person, if you are not careful, you are going to go down with them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, as, as you shared this, what came to mind is, is the need for us to be gentle as doves but be wise as serpents exactly <laughs> you need to have both <laughs> awesome awesome now but this, this is leadership um prof i'm sure you have some people who really supported your growth your leadership growth and uh, what role did they play and how did you um, sit under their leadership and their influence? How, how did you go in, in those things? How did you go about That's it? Right. Are there That's individuals right. like that? Right. Yeah. You know, in, in the corporate environment and in the ministry environment. So are there... Kwame. Yes, please. Uh, so you want to know yeah. uh, people that have inspired me along my leadership journey. Exactly. Or, or, or people who have supported me as I uh, journeyed along as a leader. Exactly. Yeah. I've asked the question, Prof, but hold on, hold on, hold on with that question. Because someone just dropped... <laughs> an aspect of the question we we're discussing okay. before now and i just want us to, to yeah. touch on that when i when i asked the question one of, of our people online derek he said that's my question <laughs> he said that's my question and now he wants me to ask you have you had to fire anybody <laughs> <laughs> this is not my question <laughs> this, this is the question it, it depends on what you call fire. You know, when you work within, in a, an environment, like, uh, if you work in an environment like mine, uh, in the university environment, um, is the government of Ghana that employs. So you just cannot write a dismissal letter mm -hmm. for people who are not performing. Uh, but if you consider firing within the context of limiting the, the tasks, limiting the responsibilities that you give to people who are not pulling up. In that regard, I can say yes. There are people whose responsibilities 
I have limited because they are not bringing results. So that is my understanding of when I say someone is fired in that context. But in the corporate environment, as we find ourselves, you definitely cannot just uh, sack somebody just like that. Uh -huh. But if I am in a private establishment, my concept has always been that whatever remuneration that we are getting must be tied to productivity, it must be tied to results. And so where people are not bringing in, I mean, results, it is important right. that we sit them down and then warn them that if you are not being productive, we cannot carry you on as a burden. If they are not pulling their weight, I will be more than happy to let them go. One other thing that I have said with reference to public sector reforms is that with reference to salaries, I have difficulties with why people, everybody should get the same salary. It is important that we have a, a threshold that you can earn. But beyond that, whatever additional amount that you are earning must be tied to productivity. If you are bringing in results, you can earn more. If you are not bringing in results, I don't see why at the end of the month we all should be earning the same salary. We don't make progress that way. Kwame, have I communicated? <laughs> ah, that's that's GG for you. <laughs> it is coming. I mean, the 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 the, the focus yeah. on productivity. Exactly. I am. Um, that's that's it. And results. results. Yes. I, I I love that point that like we're talking and talking about relationship and relationship and relation. Some people just assume mm -hmm. that when someone is so particular about relationship, then you know they they won't have an eye for results and, mm -hmm. and productivity. And because of that, a lot of things like uh, maybe some is it fair kind of. Uh, but here you are talking about emphasis on relationship and also emphasizing now the the need to achieve be productive and if you are not being productive who should bear that weight you are not willing to to bear that weight and and, and friends we have to take note of some of these things that prof is, is sharing with us thank you very much your leadership journey yeah the people that have been significant in your life on that course um i in in ministry circles right from the beginning when i became coordinator of the renewal back on campus i remember my early days as a young man on campus having been handed such a huge responsibility of leading people i remember very well when i became coordinator of the renewal at KNUST campus I hadn't been in the renewal for so long, but the mentorship of people like uh, Daddy Tony and the others really, really inspired me. Daddy Tony led me with reference to leadership as far as the renewal circles is concerned. I can mention, uh, I mean, uh, Mr. Osetutu, who uh, led us through our life in the spirit seminar and beyond that became a father in the Lord. I mean, all this while. So with reference to renewal circles, these are people who have really inspired me over the years. But what I can say is that uh, with reference to inspiration, I draw a lot of inspiration from colleagues that I work with as well. I remember so well in our days, I mean, on uh, the ITI, I mean, a national coordinating team, people like, I mean, yourself and all the people that we work with, you realize that each and every person brought something to bear. You mentioned people like Okito, I mean, uh, people like Michael and all that. <laughs> when we meet together and we are discussing an issue, the angle from where everybody brings it is so inspiring. I mean, these days, I sit back and I try to reflect on some of the meetings we had. Elijah Namsa and all that. You are having a meeting, you are discussing something, and the angle from where people will come from is so inspiring. So I will not say that it has been the effort of only a few individuals. I can say that all the people that I've worked with, 
I mean, Simon and uh, Patrick Asagba, Sairam, and all those people, you realize that by the time that we are done with the work, something has rubbed off you as far as uh, leadership is concerned. The same applies to leadership even in the academic circles. There are people that I call fathers, people that have gone ahead, people who have risen through the ranks to as far as full professors. And these are people that when you are in a committee with them, all that you are trying to do is to draw from their rich experience. And uh, there are people that I, 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 I draw a lot of inspiration from. But in terms of support, two groups of people have defined my journey so far. I talk about family and I talk about my closest friends, the people who are in my inner circles. I mean, my wife is on the line listening and the sacrifices that she and the family have had to make with reference to all the time when I've been going up and down, I cannot, I cannot finish this without honoring them for all the sacrifices that they have made and the contributions that they have made with reference to getting uh, me where I am as far as leadership is concerned. So family has been very supportive. Close friends, I mean, when things are getting out of hand, being able to have those people that you can just talk about and then laugh it off. There are instances where you are so angry and then you just crack jokes and then that is it. So um, I will say that in addition to people that I call spiritual fathers, people that I call uh, my mentors in the academic circles, my foundation and the pillars based on which my leadership journey has, I mean, been strengthened, family, and closest friends. Um, uh, Kwame, does that answer the question? You, you have tried. <laughs> <laughs> and, and mommy, mommy, go, go. God bless, God bless mommy for us. Yeah. Yes. God bless you, mommy. I can testify. I know this brother of mine, you took him. <laughs> and what you have done with his life, see the way he's looking, uh, as we used to say, nyeptic, you know, yeah. The way you're sitting there looking nyeptic. Uh, mommy has a hand in, in all that. And, and mommy, we thank you and, and God bless you for, for that. Um, uh, was it today or yesterday? Interestingly, I was looking at, um, I don't know how they call it, your WhatsApp. Uh, is it a tagline or something like that on your WhatsApp? Yeah. And I that. took note of the family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, what, what is the name of that thing? I don't know how they call it. But, the status. Um, the status of the WhatsApp status. Is a status there? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and there you, you stated... Yeah. Clearly, um, I'm, I'm trying to find it so that I can read it as you have. No, no, it. it's, it's changed now. <laughs> I, I changed it, yeah. I, I changed it. But um, basically... It's hey, but you know the one I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, I, I know. I, I, I know. <laughs> mm. <laughs> God will make a way. <laughs> uh, so that is, so what I, I had was, it all comes down to family and the very true friends around us. Uh, and then we say people matter. Yeah. Okay, so it all comes down to family and the very, and the, and the very few true friends around us. People do matter. I, I believe strongly that um, I have a very good friend uh, one of my uh, senior colleagues who always say that uh, people are sweet. Uh, he says that human beings, they are the only sweet people that you can chew. And the reality is that <laughs> when, when people are around you, it does make a difference. So people indeed uh, do matter. And family and friends definitely define how far we go as far as our journey, even in the Lord, is concerned.
when all is said and done and when everybody has left mm. the people mm. who remain with us family and our true friends when eventually i mean we are old i mean everybody will go but they will still come back to us and it's always important that we recognize the unique role that these people play in our lives so people do matter let us not work on them let us not let them feel little in themselves let us not let them feel as though they don't matter because people really matter and when we appreciate them it all comes back to us and make us who we are so for me that is it mm. oh prof thank you very much um Sister Esther, um, all the way joining us in the, from the U.S., has a comment. She says, Prof. Jerry is a true example of a servant leader. The Cali Charismatic Renewal North America Prayer Line appreciates your leadership and service, even ministering at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. GMT. <laughs> Prof, I mean, shall God bless you. One, one guy, this gentleman, I don't know why he would say this, but um, well, I'm sure you understand. John Asarebediako, he says, <laughs> behind every successful IT album is mostly an ITI sister. <laughs> and, and, and Mick Millicent is also connecting with us. She says, absolutely agree. Thank yeah. you and God bless you, Sister Betty, for your sacrifice in diverse way. God mm -hmm. sees it all. God bless you for your consistency all these years. Incredible. You see, your consistency. We don't even have time to talk about the consistency. Oh, Lord have mercy. Uh. We <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we don't even have time to talk about the consistency. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are more comments coming. Mm -hmm. Hey, who is Saga? <laughs> <laughs> Someone says Saga, you are right. I'm oh, Saga, Saga. Hey, that's true. <laughs> hey, that's, that's, that's John. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we, we thank God, we thank God for your life, Prof. Um, this conversation has been interesting, but time, time. Uh, since you are a time management man, <laughs> <laughs> we, we have to consider and yeah. lead you yeah. at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so um, thank you very much for your time. And uh, let me also appreciate you, one of the the gestures that uh, made an impression and an impact on me when we when we organized that training at mm. the golden tulip in kumasi mm. uh, you came mm. you didn't come alone mm. you came with mommy <laughs> not with mommy alone yeah. you came with two of your children and then you were blessed with two one one of the the second one was little then yeah both <laughs> came with his whole family mm -hmm. to hacker training <laughs> Um, how was the training for you, or what can you say about Haika training? Oh, I, because very soon we'll be I, I still, I still remember. Our intelligence I still remember that training on emotional intelligence, and it has really uh, been a guide. You know, you deal with all manner of people, and it is always important that you are conscious of your emotional disposition. It is always important that you are also conscious of the emotional disposition of the people around you, that you can make progress as a leader. And so I think that the training, that particular training was useful. And I want to encourage you for all that you are doing as far as that niche that you have carved for yourself is concerned. For emotional intelligence, I think that Everyone needs it. Recently, I happened to have served on a committee where we are developing a, a leadership module for all leaders in the university. And we managed to work in there something on emotional intelligence. And I'm thinking that it is important and it is critical that we pay attention to that. So hi, Kat, kudos. Uh, keep doing the good work. I encourage each and every one of us to patronize 
uh, to patronize side training when you get to hear about it. Kwame, well done. Thank you. Some, some people are already campaigning for part two of this conversation. And one sister Millicent, she, <laughs> she's there, she's saying the next one should be in the US. <laughs> Can you imagine the U.S. people are asking for us to come yeah, and do yeah. the next one in the, in the U.S. It's, it's always I want to borrow Francis' yeah, yeah. word. He says, Prof, God bless you. You are mm -hmm. such a wonderful man to mm -hmm. some of us. God bless you and lead you always. Prof, on behalf of the HiCAD community, on behalf of all of us, we are so grateful to you for your time and for your patience and for the rest of us who have also stayed online with all the inconveniences you have stuck with us up until now. We don't take it for granted at all. We appreciate your commitment. We appreciate your sacrifice. Today, we had the opportunity to hear the story, a journey of Prof. Jerry John Kuno, and he shared a lot of nuggets. If I have to go through them, maybe they won't break, but key amongst them is the vision that all of us must appreciate and understand that vision comes from God, that God has a purpose for every one of us. Once you catch it, the rest of it is to build relationship and networks and let the vision come to fruition. Whatever you will do to pay attention to detail, celebrate the people you are working with, make them feel they have something to contribute to the course, the vision that you have as a leader, you will you need to do everything possible to get your team to work together. And this is what this great man that we have online today has succeeded in doing in a lot of spheres. We who are online now, we he testify, I do testify to his sterling qualities when it comes to, to leadership. And today we get the opportunity to celebrate you, man of God, servant of God and the servant of the nation. As you said earlier, for God and Ghana. <laughs> for God and Ghana. You, you've done so much and we celebrate you. Thank you very much for making time to, to, to be with us. People remember you. Someone says, I remember those days in Legon, ITI, then God bless you, Prof. Pono. You really have a lot to share. We have to negotiate for the part two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much. And from the team at HiCard, we wish all of us the very best. And please forgive us for the way we started. We apologize. We are so sorry. This is the first time that we've had to experience this. And is there some fortunately but god is good <laughs> god is good maybe <laughs> god knows why god knows why and once we had prof in the seat he will give us that soothing smile and and all will be well with us prof this one uh, i will do it to only you pray for us say a prayer for us okay you 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 stand as a leader and yeah. once we get you on our line um, they uh, I, I, I want you to say a word of prayer in the direction you are led. Okay, okay. Shall, let's bow our heads um, and, 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 and pray. Um, we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for Amen. all that you do for us. We thank you, O oh God, even for the opportunity to share your many blessings, O oh God, even upon our lives. Lord, I am personally grateful for each and every one of my colleagues on this line. And I thank you, Lord, even for the special things, O oh God, that you are doing in our lives. Lord, we have gathered around the table to reflect on leadership. And you, O oh God, are our focus as far as leadership is concerned. It is our desire that we can become like you. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you will meet each and every one of us on this line at the point of need. Lord, I pray that what our strengths are, you, O oh God, will continue to heighten those strengths. I pray that where, O oh God, there are weaknesses that are 
an impediment even to realizing that potential that you have in us. I pray that you grant us the grace to be able to overcome. Lord, I pray and trust in whatever environment within which we find ourselves into your hands. Make us a positive influence wherever we are. Lord, you have not planted us in our environment by chance. I pray, O oh God, that you will establish us as a blessing for your own glory. I pray, O oh God, that you, O oh Lord, will continue to cover us and let it be, O oh God, that none of us will have an accident as far as leadership is concerned, but cause us to succeed for your own glory. As we retire to sleep, I pray, O oh God, that you, O oh Lord, will watch over us, that you, O oh God, will grant us rest even in our sleep. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Son, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you, Mommy. Thank you to the family. And thank you, all those who are thanking Haikat. We appreciate your custom. Thank you very, very much. Yeah. I mean, thank you also for having me and for the opportunity to share uh, these experiences with colleagues. Uh, we are open anytime. Uh, as long as work and family permits, we will be here. And I think we planned this long ago. A number of things came up. I am glad that we've been able to. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> ah, me, I didn't want to say it. Too. You have said it too. <laughs> God bless you, sir.